Okay, so in a previous video, I showed you how you could import point clouds into Blender using the add-on point cloud visualizer. However, one of the drawbacks of that method is that it didn't allow you to use the built-in renderers in Blender to render those points. But now there's a way that we can import those point clouds into Blender and render them using cycles. And I found this software repository called import PLY as verts. And the way that this works is that it modifies some of the files in the existing PLY importer in Blender. And this allows you to do that process. So if I go over here to code and then download the zip file and save it to my hard disk, I can open that zip file up, look inside, and inside we have a folder called import PLY as verts. And in there we have a folder called Blender files. And here we have init.py and import.ply. And we need to replace the equivalent files in our installation of Blender. So on the right hand side here, I've got C, program files, Blender foundation, and I'm gonna click on Blender 3.2. This actually does work with version 3.1 and probably some other versions too. I'm gonna to click on 3.2, I'm gonna to go to scripts, I'm gonna to go to add-ons, and then I'm gonna to go to import mesh PLY. And if you're being careful, you might want to back these up first, but I've done this a few times, so I know it works. And I'm gonna copy init.py and import PLY and paste them into that folder. And I'm gonna replace the file in the destination location. And I'm gonna press continue. It's gonna ask for my permission because it's a program file. And once you've done that, you can launch Blender. If your Blender is already running, I'd recommend restarting it first. So here in Blender, we can go to file, import, and if you've done it correctly, you should see Stanford PLY as verts. So if I click on that, I can load up a point cloud that I have on my hard drive, and I'll share a link to this with you so that you can try it out as well. I'm going to click on my point cloud here and I'm going to select verts colors only because we don't want any surface information. We just want the points, the colors. So I'm going to press import PLY as verts. And after a little while, you should see the points come into your viewport. And to check that this has worked properly, I'm going to select point cloud object. I'm going to go over to the object data properties and inside of color attributes here you should see this attribute called col and you should also see it appear in the attributes section as well. However, you'll notice that if we try to render this using the cycles render engine, we don't actually see any points, we just see the default queue. And that's because in order to see these points with cycles, we need to convert them into points objects instead of vertices, which is what they are now. And we can do that quite easily using geometry nodes. So I'm gonna go select my object, go over to the geometry nodes workspace, and then I'm going to um, add a new geometry nodes node tree, and I'm going to press F3 and search for the node mesh to points. I'm gonna click and add that to my node tree, and you can see that instantly we get like a little bit of shading on our model. And you'll also notice that if we render it now, we can see that there are some points there, but we don't have any color yet. So in order to add color, we need to add a material. I press F3 again, we need to search for set material put that into our geometry nodes node tree, and I'm just gonna select the default material. Then I'm gonna go over to my shading tab, and I'm also going to enable this viewport preview option, which will let me see the result in real time. And here I'm going to select the default material from this dropdown. And in order to use this color attribute that we have on our model, we're going to use the attribute node in the shader node tree. So I'm gonna press F3 to search again, and I'm gonna search for attribute I'm going to put that attribute node in there and I'm going to type in col, C-O-L, exactly as it's spelt here. And I'm going to link that color nodal to the principled BSDF. And you can see that now we're getting the colors into our point cloud, which is great. But you might also be interested in using an emission shader as well. Delete the principled BSDF, F3, search for emission, put the emission node in there in its place. And there you can see that we're getting a much brighter rendering of those points. You might notice that the color is a little bit washed out. That's because of the default color management settings inside of Blender. So if you go over to the render properties and scroll down to color management, you can change sRGB to none. And then you can see that you get a more vivid color that's a bit more representative of the actual colors on the points. And so this is really nice because we're now rendering using cycles. We can mix other objects here into the render. And another thing that I've noticed is that you can set the number of samples quite low when you're just rendering a point cloud because there isn't that much complex bouncing of light going on. So that's how you can import a point cloud into Blender with attributes and render it using cycles.